Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to this lecture series on evolutionary game theory and applications. This is lecture number 7. Uh, I am Dr. Gopal Charan Parashari, Assistant Professor of Economics in Department of HSS IIT Dharwar in Karnataka. So, what we did in last lecture, we saw how to find out ESS or how to define rather in ESS in finite populations. Okay. So, in this lecture today what we will do, we will uh, uh, try to find out ESS in a situation which we call in economics as contest. So, I will define first that what contest is, then what we will do first I will define what is a contest and then I will define some basic model of contest and after that we will find ESS that is the evolutionary equilibrium finite population ESS. finite population ESS in contest model. First, we will see in detail what contest is. Okay. So, let us proceed with this. So, basically there are certain things that are called appropriative activities. So, basically th these are the activities when agents or players. So, we will use the word agents and players interchangeably agents can influence the outcome of the process by means of certain actions okay, such as investment in weapons, bribing, hiring lawyers, advertising etcetera. So, we know in our daily life in real life that there are certain actions where these things are required. In litigations we require hiring lawyers for firms they need to engage in advertising. Similarly, there are things like bribing and in case of war or fight, they use weapons. So, all these kinds of activities, these are called appropriative activities. We will again uh, see in detail what these are. So, such kind of activities, situations, these are modeled as contest game. <coughs> so, we are doing, we have been doing many games in this course. So, we started with prisoner's dilemma, then we did uh, an R&D competition between two firms, then we did battle of success. So, uh, this kind of uh, many kind of games we did in uh, when we, uh, we were using this, when we were explaining this ESS, then we also took up hawk and dove game. So, in the same sense, this contest is a game. Okay. So, basically contest is a game where what happens, players expand their resources or efforts irreversibly to increase their chances of success, chances of winning. For example, in some litigation what they will do? A person will try to hire a better lawyer to, to win that case, win that litigation. So, this kind of situation we model with the help of contest game. Okay? Fine. So, basically if we move on like what uh, to know what appropriation is in more detail. So, what we can do? We can think of appropriation involving activities that involve grabbing what others have produced. So, basically in economics when we talk about activities, then we talk about production, trade and exchange. So, these kind of activities we deal with in economics. Okay. Trade and exchange. But what happens? There are certain activities, as I gave few examples in the last slide, where what happens? We do not do, or the agents or players do not do the production, actual production, or any trade or exchange. Okay, and in some particular situations, what they do instead of producing, some players try to grab what others have produced. 
Okay. So, these kind of situation we can think of uh, we know this robbery and looting all those kind of things and also this related to conflict, but the kind of activities I am talking about they are not just limited to conflict appropriation is found almost in all walks of life. Okay. So, as I giving uh, you know this harsh example of conflict when they are looting what others have produced, but this model or the discussion that we are doing that is true for many other activities also that are not even violent. Okay. So, do not think that everything violent is coming here such kind of activities also uh, involve the situations which do not have any violence. Okay. So, for example, we have this strikes lockouts during this you know uh, labor strikes and all. Okay. So, these things these things these kind of activities are also part of appropriative activities. In fact, in corporate world also if you see that different firm compete and a firm tries to sabotage the other firm rival firm without any violence or anything. Okay. So, all such activities are termed as appropriative activities. Okay. So, basically if we want to define technically little more technically this then we can say that all such activities that take away resources from production, waste resources and change the incentive for productive investment and innovation fall under this category of appropriative activities. So, these are the important things. So, you can think of activities that take away resources from production, then waste resources and then more importantly change the incentive for production productive investment and innovation all these kind of activities fall under appropriation. So, if I am talking about I am saying that all such activities that change incentive for productive investment and innovation. So, that fall under appropriative activities. So, I, I can explain it like this that when I am talking about that what agents do instead of producing themselves or investing their resources or efforts in some production process what they will do they try to grab what others have already produced. Okay. So, then for them there is no you know incentive for innovating no incentive for this productive investment for them the important thing is investing in such kind of say arm grabbing or something arm uh, accumulation. So, that they can grab what others have produced. So, I think this idea of appropriation now should be clear to you. Now, we will move forward that how we model that. So, basically <coughs> as I already told that such kind of appropriative activities we model with the help of contest game. So, I will briefly explain very basic model of a contest game. So, basically I will consider that there are two players 1 and 2 player 1 player 2 okay. and they are engaged in some contest for some prize of value V. Okay. It can be a piece of land, it can be any other resource, it can be a, any position of power or whatever. Okay. We will see these things in detail also. So, basically this some prize V is there this prize or this article of valuation V this cannot be allocated with the help of market mechanism then what happens these players fight or we can say contest for the allocation of this prize of value V. Okay. Then to describe the game then after describing players we describe set of actions. So, basically for these players effort or investment undertaken in this contest by these players is set of actions. So, basically G 1 is the effort level that this uh, player 1 expands in this contest and G 2 is the effort level that player 2 expands in this contest. Okay. Now, having done this third thing is how the effort of players basically this G 1 G 2 whatever effort they are exp expanding in these kind of activities how that is affecting the winning or success of players in the contest. So, basically for that we define something called contest success function. Okay. So, basically is it tells it represents the probabilities of their success in the in this contest. Okay. So, suppose as I already told that G 1 and G 2 are the actions undertaken by these players. So, then we can define the probability of player i 
I can be anything 1 or 2. Okay. So, that is represented by this simple function where we write phi of the effort of player i whose probability we want to calculate upon phi of g 1 the effort of player 1 plus phi of g 2. Okay. And this is when the total this sum of these function of g 1 g 2 is positive otherwise this is 1 by 2. So, this is how we define probability of player i for success in this contest for getting price b. Okay. So, we, I, I can elaborate it I can write separately for player 1 and player 2. So, we can write the probability of player 1 as a function of g 1 comma g 2. Okay. This is nothing but some increasing function phi of effort level of player 1 divided by this phi of effort level of player 1 plus phi of effort level of player 2. Similarly, probability of player 2 as a function of g 1 and g 2, okay, this is nothing but phi of g 2 divided by phi of g 1 plus phi of g 2. Okay. So, this is how we define this probabilities by this function which is called contest success functions. Okay. And needless to say we can clearly see the total probability this p 1 plus p 2 is 1. p 1 is the probability with which player 1 wins the contest that is he gets the prize b and p 2 is the probability with which player 2 wins the contest. Okay. And on the basis of that we can write payoff of both the players. So, for player i this payoff of player i we are representing with pi i which is again function of g 1 and g 2 we can write this is nothing but probability of his success in contest multiplied by the value of the price minus his effort levels. So, idea is basically how we have written this. So, basically with probability suppose we talk about player 1. So, I am writing here the payoff of player 1 this is equal to with probability p 1 he is winning the contest. So, he is getting the price v okay. plus with probability 1 minus p 1 which is equal to p 2 this is the probability of player 1 losing the contest. So, with this probability he will not get the price or we can say he will get 0. So, this is the total expected payoff from the contest for winning the prize minus his effort level. So, he is expanding g 1 in the contest. So, we will substitute this g 1. So, if we solve this we will get p 1 v plus this 0 I am omitting it I am omitting it. So, basically p 1 b minus g 1. So, this is the probability of player 1. Similarly, we can write probability of player 2 as p 2 b minus g 2. So, these are the probabilities. Okay. So, this is how we basically model these kind of contest games. So, basically we can model as I already told that this, uh, this kind of appropriative activities span lot of areas in our real life. So, basically we can <coughs> model competition for market share, political campaigns, litigation, fight or wars, lobbying, <coughs> patent race and contracts etcetera. So, I will explain a bit. So, basically if we talk about say some political competition. So, we always always say see that uh, elections happen other political competitions happen. So, basically what it can be in political co uh, competition this v the price we are talking about this may be the value attached with the acquiring an office. Okay. Some minister office or some uh, a member of parliament office or whatever. So, this v is value attached to that and then two or more contestants they are competing for this position. Okay. Then they expend some effort that we are calling g in our model and this g can be some campaign spending how much expenditure they are making while campaigning for that election or some political competition. So, this is how we can relate it to political competitions. Okay. Similarly, in case of litigation or fight v can be a value attached to this v the price value that we considered in our basic model in the last slide. So, this value attached to some item 
it can be a piece of land, an estate, or some title. Okay. So, these kind of things we either we fight directly or we fight through litigation. Okay. So, if we fight this these kind of things in legal system through litigation, then these G's that is the effort level of the players that they expend to win these uh, objects or uh, things, then this G is legal expenses in terms of hiring uh, good quality of advocates and all. Okay. If this is actual fight like a war, then G's can be the expenditure level that players expend in what cost of raising an army also acquiring arms in case of actual fight or wars. Okay. Apart from the, that this G can also be uh, some resources that are devoted for sabotaging the rival players. Okay. So, this is how we can see these activities in the uh, in relation to our model. Similarly, what we can do? We can also see that <coughs> if we talk about lobbying activities, I hope that all of uh, all of you are uh, familiar with this word lobbying. So, in lobbying, B can be any value of a public policy. Okay. So, in policy domain, people lobby for uh, some favorable law. For example, a law granting certain rights to certain citizens. Okay. Similarly, some law that has a provision for subsidies to agriculture or some restrictions in the to enter in the market. So, such kind of political objectives are there. So, for that people lobby. Okay. So, here B the price can be the value as associated with such kind of policies. Okay. Similarly, when we go for some price or want to have some patent, then this B represent the value of that grant or the price or that a patent. Okay. In all these cases, the G may be expenses made in order to participate or influence the jury or the prize. Okay. So, in case of lobbying, this can be expend expenditure that people do for uh, influencing uh, some political panel, panel or in case of prizes to influence the jury and all. Okay. So, similarly, if we talk about this corporate rivalry, then B we can think of as a market share. Okay. So, firms compete to acquire more and more market share and G can be expenditure on advertisement and other brand building activities. So, this is how uh, I gave you a few examples to understand that how our model that basic model I discussed in the last slide, how that is applicable to different uh, activities that we witness or that we see in our daily life. Okay. So, we will move forward and what now I will do, I will write some, I will uh, describe some basic model of contest okay? uh, and then I will calculate the evolutionary equilibrium for that model. So, that is our idea. So, what we are going to do? We are going to apply the finite population ESS definition that we have developed in the previous lecture. So, we will apply that definition to our basic model of contest. Okay? So, let us go for that. So, basically what I will do? So, basic settings go like this. So, we have a population of n individuals in a population okay? and then we consider a pair wise contest. So, that is what we, we have been doing in our previous lecture also. So, basically <coughs> we consider that two individuals are randomly drawn okay, from this population and they engage in a contest for, for a price of value V. Okay? And as we are randomly drawing two individuals, then we can consider that there is a contest game between player number i and player number j. Okay? This is how we define it as it is a pair wise contest. That means, two people, two random people are contesting or fighting at one time. Okay? So, here we can define G i is the expenditure of player i in the contest as we described in earlier uh, setting also and G j is the expenditure of player j in the contest. Okay? So, before going for this evolutionary equilibrium in this model, what we will do? We will first find out 
the Nash equilibrium of this model in this model in this setting. Okay. So, just to see how their behavior is in this setting, if we consider this rationalist approach that we follow in Nash equilibrium. Okay. And then we will go for evolutionary equilibrium and then we will try to compare both of them. Okay. So, with our discussion, it should be clear to you that how these Nash equilibrium or the Nash rationalist approach is different from evolutionary game theory. Okay. So, that is the idea to find out both and then compare both of them with each other. Okay. So, for finding out this Nash equilibrium, now we will write the payoff of both the players in this setting. So, basically as I already told you, uh, I that payoff of player is basically in the previous slide I told you, say payoff of player i is nothing but probability of player i that is coming from contest success function multiplied by the price value v minus expenditure of that player. Okay. So, what we are doing, we are taking this probability as I already told this is coming from contest success function. Okay. And this contest success function earlier in earlier example was what? P i was phi of g i divided by phi of g i plus phi of g j. But for simplicity in this case what we are taking? We are taking this phi of g equal to g itself. So, this function reduces to this. This is our contest function uh, success function in this model. This is very simpler version of this okay, to make the things simpler. So, now we can interpret over this payoff function. So, payoff of any player i as a function of g i and g j the effort level of both the players equal to probability of winning for player i okay, multiplied by the price value v that we are considering here minus the effort level of player i. Okay. Similarly, we can write probability of player j as a function of g i and g j is nothing but g j upon g i plus g j multiplied by b minus g j. So, this is how we can write payoff of player j also. Okay. So, or precisely we can call this is expected payoff. I should write expected payoff of player i and player j. This is for player i, this is for player j. Okay. Now, to find out the Nash equilibrium, what we will do? We will differentiate the payoff of player i with respect to g i. So, if we differentiate this equation, this one with respect to g i. So, I will again write it here, so that you can follow what I am doing. So, pi i as a function of g i and g j is nothing but g i upon g i plus g j okay, into b minus g i. This is our payoff of player number i. Okay. So, we can differentiate this with respect to g i. So, then we get del pi i upon del g i differentiation of this. Why del? because this is a function of both g i and g j. So, we are doing partial differentiation with respect to g i only. Okay. So, that is why this partial differentiation coming into picture here. So, if we simply differentiate it, we can differentiate as b is not a function of g i. So, we have to differentiate this. This we can do by simply differentiation of a fraction okay, f 1 upon f 2. So, this will be the differentiation of this minus b and then minus of differentiation of g i which is 1. So, this is the differentiation of this payoff expected payoff of player i with respect to g i. Okay. And then if we solve this and put equal to 0 for the first order condition, then we get this first order condition like this. Okay. Fine. And then what we need to find out? We need to find out a symmetric Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, if we put in this equation g i equal to g j equal to say some g n e that is effort level under Nash equilibrium. So, in one of the previous classes we discussed symmetric games and symmetric Nash equilibrium. So, same thing we are applying here. So, here in symmetric Nash equilibrium the effort level of both the equilibrium effort level of both the players will be equal to 
one value that is GNE. Okay, that is how it is symmetric Nash equilibrium. So if we put this for GI and GJ, if we put uh, put GNE for both, then and we solve, then we get GNE equal to BY four. Okay, so pretty simple. You can see that, and then having got this the value of equilibrium effort level under Nash equilibrium, which is BY four, we can put this BY four into this equation, the payoff the equilibrium effort equal to B by 4. So, we can put as G i, G i and G j and also this G i equal to B by 4. Then we get the payoff of both the players that will also be equal in the case of symmetric Nash equilibrium. So, both player will get B by 4 as their payoff or expected payoff in this case. Okay. So, I will, I will again repeat. So, we got this first uh, this expected payoff for both the players. So, I wrote this for player number i and then if I differentiate it with respect to g i after partial differentiation I get this equation and while solving and putting g i equal to g j equal to some common value g n e equilibrium value for symmetric Nash equilibrium then I get this unique and symmetric Nash equilibrium as g n e equal to b y 4 that is an equilibrium both the players will expand this b y 4 as their efforts to win the prize of value v. And if we put this g n e in this payoff equation, then we get that the payoff of or expected payoff of both the players will be b by 4. Okay. So, this was Nash equilibrium. Now, what we will do? We will find out the evolutionary equilibrium in the same setting. So, for that what I will do? I will quickly go through this definition of evolutionary stable strategy just to recap. So, basically we discussed already that strategy is evolutionarily stable if the population that adopts this strategy cannot successfully be invaded by a sufficiently small group of mutants who adopts a different strategy that is some mutant strategy. So, this is the idea we have already discussed these things. So, this definition was given by Maynard, Maynard Smith and Price in their seminal paper in nature. Okay. So, basically if we consider a large large population as they did in their model, then we will see that suppose most of them are playing an ESS strategy that is X ESS and then a small group of mutation uh, mutant players comes in and they play some different strategy X M. Okay. So, players engage in a random pairwise contest and then pi ESS and pi M are the expected fitness or payoff of an ESS player, this is of an ESS player and a pi M is the payoff of the mutant player. So, suppose this kind of engagement is there, then we can define ESS like this, we have already done this that the payoff of ESS against another ESS player should always be more than the payoff of mutant against ESS player. Okay. This was the uh, condition for ESS we have already done and then we also did the alternating best response uh, thing that if so if ESS is doing as good as the mutant strategy is doing against uh, ESS strategy then this condition should be satisfied. Okay. That means the ESS should do better compared to, uh, against uh, mutant strategy compared to how mutant strategy is doing against the mutant strategy. So, this is how we defined uh, evolutionary stable strategy in our setting also, but this is what this is evolutionary stable strategy or ESS in infinite or large population infinite or large population. So, that this we have already discussed. So, then what happened? <coughs> so, this as I already told that this Smith and Price definition of ESS may not Smith and Price definition, this holds true only for pairwise interaction in infinite or very large populations. Okay. So, this gentleman came up with another idea, he presented a generalized version of ESS okay, that work for any finite population, it need, need, need not to be needs not to be a very large population and also for the contest of varying size. 
okay as we are discussing this pairwise contest so i will stick to pairwise contest in our definition but this generalized formulation of ess caters to any varying size of contest okay so basically as per definition of scaffer so a strategy x ess adopted by a population n okay for a pairwise contest is considered invaded by a mutant strategy xm when the payoff for a single player playing xm which is the mutant against x ess of the other player is strictly greater than the payoff of a player using x ess that is uh, original strategy in the population against either one of the players with x ess or mutant using mutant strategy xm so this we have already done so mathematically we can represent same thing like this so basically we have already done that in this setting the payoff of ess player should be more than payoff of mutant in this pairwise contest between ess player and mutant player okay so basically how we define these things so pi m is nothing but payoff of xm strategy the strategy of the mutant player against x ess so basically the idea is in this population of n members we have chosen two members say player 1 and player 2 okay so this player 1 can be anything and player 2 can be anything because there are now one mutant n n minus 1 incumbent players or the players we started with in with in this population okay so the idea is from this mix we are choosing these two players okay so if mutant player we are considering we are writing payoff for the mutant player because there is a one mutant so this mutant player will always be play, uh, paired with another this incumbent player or the player with original strategy x ess okay that is why i have written payoff of this mutant player as payoff in terms of xm against x ess but if we talk about the payoff of any incumbent incumbent player or the ess player that will be this why because this incumbent player when we are drawing two random members from this population it can be either paired with another ess player i am talking here as a loose notation or mutant player okay so this is the idea so when this is paired with another ess player this happens with this probability as we have already discussed okay so with this probability this ess player will be paired with another ess player this is what i have written and with this probability 1 upon n minus 1 this ess player will be play, paired with another mutant okay so this is the expected payoff of expected payoff of fitness as we call it in evolutionary game theory of ess player again i am telling although we have already discussed because ess player can either be paired with this another ess player or the mutant so both things we have to consider so this happens with this probability this happens with this probability so this is what we have written fine now another important thing as i already told that for this thing for this ess to be ess uh, evolutionary stable for some strategy what we do the payoff of ess player as we did in the last slide should be greater or equal to payoff of mutant then we say that this strategy is ess okay so if i take this to left hand side or sorry i can take this to so if i take this to right hand side then is this will be like this the same equation we can write pi m minus pi ess this and this should be less or equal to 0 okay so from this idea this scaffer who 
uh, came up with this generalized version of uh, finite population ESS. So, according to him, this ESS maximizes this because this is pi m minus pi ESS is less or equal to 0. So, it attains maximum value at 0, at which the strategy this ESS, uh, if we put as x m, that it maximizes this equation. So, basically, as for Schaeffer's criteria, we can say that the definition that, that we normally talk about this is equivalent to saying that this quantity as a function of x m, that is the mutant strategy. Okay, reaches its maximum value 0 when x m equal to x e s s. So, we can say basically x e s s the e s s strategy locally maximizes this quantity. Okay, how it is coming again I am telling we take this to right hand side and this equation converts to this. So, this is attending this value of 0 which is maximum value of this expression at x m equal to x e s s. So, we will we will utilize this definition which is equivalent to our original definition this okay, to find out the e s s in our setting fine. So, basically if we do that then we get this result. So, basically what is happening for a pairwise contest in a population of size n that we are taking for a price of common valuation b. So, out of this population of n players okay, we are considering a pairwise contest that is two random players are engaged in contest and what they are fighting for? They are fighting for this price of common valuation b. Okay. Then there exists a, a symmetric ESS, there exists a symmetric ESS with each player's choice of appropriative effort and expected payoff as this. So, ESS efforts of players equilibrium efforts under ESS is this for each player and this is the corresponding payoff. So, we will see how we are getting these values. Okay, so, let us move forward. So, to see this what we will consider? We will consider again the same setting that what we are doing we are starting with a population of n members then out of these n members which is a finite population. We are considering that initially each all members are endowed with some strategy say g. Okay. Then what happens a single mutant with another strategy g m that is a mutant strategy in this contest game. So, again I am telling that g is nothing but the expand the expenditure or the efforts they expend in the contest to get that price of valuation b. So, we will start with the same thing that. So, what is happening? B have a population of n members okay. and we are considering a we are considering a pairwise contest. I have already described this, I am again writing it, so that you understand this. We are considering a pairwise contest for a price of value v. Okay. So, we will consider that each member of this population population is endowed with a strategy to choose G pay attention G as an effort level or expenditure effort level in this fight or contest. I am writing fight, so that you understand clearly what is happening fight or contest. 
and as I have made clear this may or may not be actual fight. Okay. So, this is what we are considering a population of n members okay, considering a pairwise contest for a prize of valuation v. Okay. And then we, we start like this when we calculate the ESS we are considering that each member initially of this population is endowed with a strategy where they choose they are hardwired as I have already told that in case of uh, ESS or evolutionary strategy I have already told you that they do not choose they are hardwired with some inbuilt strategy. So, here what is happening they are hardwired or that is what I am writing they are endowed with a strategy to choose G as their effort level in this fight or contest. Okay. Now, what happens now a mutant single mutant with another strategy this mutant strategy which is the GM which is mutant strategy invades this population. Okay. So, what we will we have now in the population? So, we have n minus 1 members with strategy G okay. and one mutant one mutant with mutant strategy G m. So, this is our population mix now. Okay. So, having done this now we will try to find out the ESS in this setting finite population setting. So, basically we already know that we did in the last lecture also in case of uh, an example that we discussed when four firms were there and they were contemplating on whether to go for high uh, marketing uh, strategy or go for the modest marketing. Okay. In the similar fashion we will apply the same definition here. Okay. So, what is the definition here that we write the payoff of the mutant player as we discussed in the last uh, slide itself. So, this is nothing but payoff of mutant player with strategy G m against G a player with a strategy G as we are considering this contest in pairwise setting that is two players are fighting at one time. So, this when we are writing for mutant. So, mutant will always be paired with another fellow with G as a strategy these because we have one mutant and n minus 1 members with G. Okay. So, this is nothing but probability of winning this contest. So, which is the effort level of the mutant divided by sum of these both effort level G m plus G okay, multiplied by the value of prize minus the effort level of the mutant. So, this for this discussion I am calling equation number 1. This is nothing but payoff of mutant. Similarly, we can write payoff of the incumbent player. So, this will be with as we have already discussed many times. So, with this probability n minus 2 upon n minus 1 this mutant player will be paired against another sorry this in incumbent player will be paired against another incumbent player plus with this probability 1 upon n minus 1 this player will be paired against a mutant. So, this is the payoff of this incumbent player we can write the values. So, this becomes n minus 2 divided by n minus 1 this we can write this is nothing but g upon g plus g okay, into v minus g okay, plus 1 upon n minus 1 into g the pay, the expenditure level of this incumbent player divided by sum of effort level of incumbent plus effort level of mutant multiplied by the price v minus g. So, this is how we can write this payoff of incumbent player. Okay. Having done this 
if we recall the last slide, not the last slide, basically this slide. So, I told, so normally we say that the payoff of ESS player on the incumbent player should be more than payoff of mutant player, then we say that this incumbent strategy is ESS. Okay. The same thing we can say like this that this x m equal to x ESS locally maximizes this pi m minus pi ESS. So, we will apply the same definition to our setting here. So, I will say instead of saying that pi i should always be greater or equal to pi m, I will use the alternate definition the same uh, coming from this one only that this ESS I call G ESS should be equal to the argument of maximum of with respect to G m of this function called pi m minus pi i. So, if we maximize the relative fitness of mutant player with respect to the incumbent player. So, this pi m minus pi i is what? Nothing but relative fitness of mutant player minus relative to incumbent player. So, our if we maximize this objective function pi m minus pi i with respect to g m, then the argument will be your ESS. This is coming from our this discussion we had here. Okay, that x m equal to x ESS maximizes this. Okay, maximum value is zero, so we will use this definition only. So x ESS locally maximizes this pi m minus pi ESS. This is nothing but relative payoff of mutant with respect to incumbent player. Okay, fine. So basically, if we see this quantity, then we can write this this minus this. So, this will be what pi m minus pi i relative payoff of mutant with respect to incumbent is nothing but this g m divided by g m plus g into v minus g m this is your pi m minus this whole equation minus 1 upon n minus 1 I am writing from here g upon g plus g m into v minus g okay, minus as we are minus this whole thing minus of n minus 2 upon n minus 1. I am writing this if you focus on this part. So, let me this part in red then you will see this is not a function of g m. Okay. So, we are maximizing with respect to g m. So, this part in objective function is not a function of g m, this is a function of g only. So, we can consider it as constant and I am writing for this uh, red and close part as some say theta g. Okay. So, this is our objective function. So, our job is to maximize this with respect to g m. So, what we will do, we can ignore this part while maximizing, because this does not evolve, involve our uh, this maximizing variable. Okay. So, we will ignore this, G, uh, this part and we will maximize this part only. Okay. So, our objective function now to maximize becomes this. Okay. Okay, so, let us do that. So, I can simply write my objective function is now to maximize objective function maximize is <coughs> this is nothing but g m upon g m plus g into v minus g m minus 1 upon n minus 1 g upon g plus g m v minus g. So, we are ignoring the previous theta part that I described this I am not writing because it is not a function of our decision variable that is g m. Okay. So, we will we have to 
maximize this. So, if we differentiate it with respect to g m, differentiate or I should call partially differentiate, differentiate with respect to g m, then we get what? We will get, so I am writing directly g upon g m plus g square simply applying this division formula or fraction formula v minus 1. So, differentiation of g m is 1. Okay. So, v is constant. So, v is coming like this. This is a function of g m. So, this is the differentiation of this with respect to g m. Okay. This is our first bracket minus 1 upon n minus 1. So, again I can write so, here again v is constant only we have to differentiate this. So, this will be nothing but minus of g upon g plus g m square into v. Okay. Again the differentiation of g is 0, so minus 0. So, this is our partial differentiation with respect to g m and for first order condition we have to put it equal to 0. Okay. Also, we discussed in the previous case also when we were doing Nash equilibrium and also the ESS, and now we are trying to find out. So, basically, here I am talking about the first order condition only, but you should also remember the second order condition. <coughs> so, this is first order condition, the second order condition should also be satisfied. That is what? Suppose I call this objective function of uh, say big pi, okay, or I should call it pi relative. So, this is the differentiation of pi relative with respect to g m. So, here a second order condition this del 2 pi relative the same objective function as a function with respect to double differentiation with respect to g m this should be less than 0 this is the second order, second, uh, second order condition that should also be followed I am not discussing it here. Okay, but this should also be true, it is true in this case I know. Similarly, at this place also we discussed here, here also I talked about this first order condition only, okay. this, this is first order condition, but with this the second order condition del pi i, del 2 pi i upon del g i square should be less than 0. This should also be satisfied and in this case it is satisfying that is how we are getting these equilibrium values. Okay. Fine. So, we will again go back to this what we are doing. So, given that this second order condition also satisfied, then if we solve this first order condition, then we get that for a symmetric ESS. What does, does that mean? It means g equal to g m in symmetric case equal to some g e okay, ESS value. So, then we put if we put it this in this first order condition we get g e equal to n upon n minus 1 b by 4. Okay. So, this is our finite population ESS. So, we just employed our definition of finite population that we learnt in the last lecture to our setting of contest and we got this finite population ESS in contest game. Okay. So, if we put this G E value, okay. So, we can also get the payoff of both the players, it will be equal in case of evolutionary setting, this turns out to be, if we can put this value in uh, one of the equations, this any equations. Okay. So, this comes out to be n minus 2 upon n minus 1 into b by 4. Okay. So, 
this is how we have solved for this game for ESS uh, infinite population ESS setting. Okay, fine. So now we will, as we have now found out both Nash equilibrium and ESS, so we will quickly compare both of these. So basically, we saw that in case of Nash equilibrium, the equilibrium effort level by both the players is B by four, and in case of ESS, it is this n upon n minus one B by four. So if we see this, so we can proceed with this that we can upon n minus one is what more than 1 as n is greater than n minus 1. Okay? So, this b by 4 is getting multiplied by something more than 1 n upon n minus 1, then we are getting GSS. So, we can quickly write that GESS which is equal to n upon n minus 1 into b by this is greater than b y 4 as this is equal to g Nash equilibrium. So, basically excess level of effort in case of pairwise contest what they expand in case of Nash equilibrium or rest list approach. Yes, they are expanding only b y 4 in ESS they are expanding more than that. So, we can say that it is a well established result now. Found we find more aggressive behavior under ESS than. Okay. So, with this gives rise to something called over dissipation. Over dissipation is what? Dissipation is these people are V and they are expanding as they are lot of part of this V as effort table in this context. This value of the price this is getting dissipated okay. compared to the price value then we call that this is over dissipation. This over dissipation happening in comparison to behavior under ESS compared to Nash. Why? the effort level is more in case of ESS. So, this is one finding. Similarly, we can also see the payoff equilibrium is B by 4 that. So, we can simply write it here as this that as this n this is less than 1 because n minus 2 is less than n minus 1 by ESS equal to n minus 2 upon n minus 1 in less than B by 4 which is Nash equilibrium. So, in case of okay, and this is uh, intuitive also because the case of ESS they have, so they are getting going to get less payoff in the case of we observe something called spiteful behavior under ESS. We already can quickly tell you that what is happening. So, we see that payoff has in this case the payoff has been reduced for the players, but strategies they are adopting this kind of strategies in final their payoff is getting reduced, but they are able to reduce the payoff of their opponent also their own loss. Why? Because they have reduced the payoff of their. So, this is how we explain this spiteful behavior under ES. So, this we have done. So, these were the few references in this uh, presentation and this is where I will stop here. So, basically uh, how to apply the definition of finite population ESS that we learned and we applied that same definition to some setting of and I gave you many examples of these uh, kind of activities that we find the same definition to such situations and we then saw the equilibrium the evolutionary equilibrium behavior 
with the Nash equilibrium. So, we will uh, stop it here, stop here, and we will meet in the next class. Thank